Welcome back to Falling Fox Gaming everybody, I'm your host Blaine and today we're going to be continuing with Genesis Alpha 1. We're doing part 2 but technically we're actually starting a new game because with a new rig and a fully updated game, I basically had to start a new game, I had no real choice. But we're going to choose kind of the similar options as we did last time, so we're just going to kind of jump into the game with the same expectations as if this is a continuation with a slightly different ship build. So let's see what that looks like now. Alright so here we are on the bridge and everything looks pretty much the same as it did before. We have our people that are scanning the local systems, and if we go over to the computer here, we can take a look at our new system. Now, we're not going to go into detail about this just yet. Instead, let's go ahead and actually take a look at our new ship and our new ship design. As I said before, I had to start a brand new game. I didn't really have a choice, so I did have to do a slightly different layout. So the way that we have it this time is that if we head right on out of our bridge here and take a left, this long hallway will eventually lead us to the greenhouse. And so if we head back down past the bridge, right to the left here will actually be the bio tank, which is actually a new room for us. If we go inside here, there's really nothing special in here. It's just where we'll store the extra biomass that we'll collect throughout our different missions. And then just to the left of the bio tank, there is nothing. It's just an empty corridor in case we need space later. And then across from the bio tank is the turbo lift, which of course goes downstairs. And just off the turbo lift, to the left we have the deposit room, and then to the right is the storage room. And then if we make our way down to the hallway to the left is the crew quarter area. And then on the opposite side of the crew quarters is the tractor beam room. And again, I left a space in between them just in case I need to expand later on. And of course we have people working in here as per usual. Now the one thing that is actually really interesting is with the updates that I did to the game, there's actually a whole bunch of new stuff and that includes things that we can pick up from the debris piles with the tractor beam. So if we look here, there's things like, um, what is this, gunpowder and framework. These are all new building materials. Actually, I'm, glad, I'm kind of glad the game has some new stuff because it'll make things a little more interesting. So we're going to go ahead and just pick up some of this stuff here. I'm just going to skip actually doing it unless something interesting happens. But we need some of it to continue on with our mission so we're going to go do that now and just as i suspected nothing interesting really happened during all the tractor beam stuff so we're just going to go ahead and build a hangar now that we have the materials for it and then we're going to go ahead and land on one of the planets to see if anything has changed so I've unassigned the people working in the tractor beam room so that way they can work here in the hangar and then we just have to unassign a couple other people and bring them here so we're just going to go ahead and assign two people pretty much at random here let's just go ahead and take this guy here Wait, hold on. Aw, oh, crap. Uh, we need to get back to the greenhouse and get that guy assigned there before our plant dies and we start losing oxygen. No, 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 no. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, um, apparently we had somebody working in the greenhouse and apparently they were important. I didn't know you actually had to keep somebody assigned there to keep the plants growing. I thought they just helped grow new plants, so that's my bad. And we might lose people because of that. Whoops. Let's just go ahead and assign somebody here or reassign them. Maybe somebody from the bridge. They don't matter. We don't need them doing anything up there anyways. And let's hope that one person is enough to stabilize all of our plants. We only have four, so I think you only need one person, or I'm assuming so if that's all we had in, you know, the beginning. So let's hope that does it. It looks like it is. Okay. So <laughs> crisis averted for now, I guess. Back to what we were doing back in the hangar. All right, so back in the hangar, uh, I wanted to show you guys that I did add in a requested name. New, you are now in the game and you are in the hangar like you requested. So you'll be coming along with us to the planet we choose to go to. And speaking of that, the planets now have some new resources on them that I am not used to having on here. So taking a quick look at the different planets we have and the resources on them, I think we're just going to go to the planet here with the iron resource because that has framework or it's used for framework stuff. And I know that is some of the modules on the ship require that. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So to the planet and I'll go ahead and grab the turrets and the shields that spawn in here. I kind of forgot to grab them earlier so I should do that now before I forget and then get to the planet and wish I had them. And now that we're actually at the planet there's several things that we should probably talk about. One of them is that with the greatly increased graphic settings that I have <laughs> the planets look a lot spookier and everything is a lot darker than it was before. So that's something I'm gonna have to get used to on my own and I'm probably gonna miss a few things because of that. The other thing is that the proximity detection now is no longer that stupid little icon on your wrist when you had your rifle out. Now there's this little like panel that pops up and lets you know that at any point in time when there's hostiles on the field, which direction they're in, which is a greatly increased, uh, let's say quality of life improvement. So I'm happy for that. So we're just gonna go ahead and run around on this 
planet a little bit and take a look and see if there's anything cool that we can see that we might be interested in actually interacting with. One barren planet later, there is one kind of cool effect from this planet and that's these little critters that are on it. When you kill them, they actually leave behind this little like toxic gas that actually hurts you when you go over it. So you do got to watch out for that. And unfortunately, the crew members do not avoid it on their own. So they've been taking damage constantly by fighting these things. And it seems like our harvester is full. So let's just go ahead and head back up to the mothership once everybody gets aboard here. Go ahead and just click the launch harvester button. And now we just gotta wait. Okay, so it looks like some hostiles have entered on the map. And normally, if I remember correctly, if they are actually on the map like they are currently, that means they should come aboard our ship with us. So we should probably do a quick scan of the local area to see if anything came aboard. We're not getting any warnings or anything, but that doesn't really mean anything at the moment. We should probably just go ahead and set up our turrets and stuff over here. All right, I struggled to get the turret and the shield in the same location, so I had to put the shield down first, followed by the turret this time. And uh, now we should go take a look to see if there's any kind of infestation, because if there is, we should take care of it. And yeah, right there. Yep. So this is why we come up and take a look. There is definitely an infestation. Let's go ahead and clear that out right now before that gets any worse. Okay. Admittedly, this took me far longer than I wanted to to clear out this infestation. Ah, uh, there kept being like little tiny bits that like popped up around my ship over the course of what had to been like 15 minutes, maybe even 20. So now that that's done, <laughs> we're going to actually use the tractor beam to bring aboard some more materials because I want to do a little bit more building on the ship and we need resources for that. So we're going to go ahead and beam aboard a few more things. And if anything interesting happens, I'll show it. Otherwise, we're just going to skip to us having done that. And as it turns out, we're actually missing other materials, so we actually have to go back down to a planet. So I guess we're going to do two planets in this episode. Let's just go ahead and head down to the planet and see what this one has to offer. I am pretty excited. It does seem like the planets have changed a bit. Kind of don't know what to expect, and I'm hoping that each planet has something drastically different than what I'm used to. Keeps the game exciting. All right, so this planet seems a little bit barren, similar to the other one, but there is supposed to be a site on this planet, which means some free tech. So let's go try and find that first. And that was pretty fast. It was right over here, kind of right by the ship. We'll go ahead and wait for this to download. I think we just have to stand nearby still. Yep, it looks like it. So we'll just wait for that to finish and see what tech we get. And it looks like we unlocked the heavy pistol, which is a decent item, I suppose. I don't plan on using it probably, but it's good to have nonetheless. We should probably go check on our crewmates. They did get into a fight with something. I didn't see what it was. Nothing attacked me, only them. Hopefully they didn't get too badly hurt. And it does look like they killed whatever it is. Probably another small creature. And this actually reminds me, we need to actually start farming some of these planets for some of the unique DNA traits that aliens have to offer so that we can upgrade our clones at some point. So I decided to wait around the planet and to try and collect the rest of the DNA we needed to get the upgrade for this species. And I think this little grouping here should have the last of it. Yep, there we go. So there's the last of the DNA that we needed. We have now unlocked a little upgrade for our clones if we want to add it to our clones in the future. But let's get off this rock and head back to our ship. Okay, and after some uh, alien hunting aboard our ship, I've decided that I do not like the layout of it. I want to try something a little bit different with this layout compared to what we did last time, and I'm not a fan of it. The aliens have a couple little areas that they can get to that I can't really stop them or track them easily, so we're going to have to redesign our ship here in a minute. Okay, so after a thoughtful redesign of the ship, we've isolated our storage and deposit locations all into one little section of the ship, so that way we can take care of anything that spawns there. And we've also added a workbench up above on the top level of the ship, that way we can replenish our turrets and shields, which I've jettisoned into space a couple of different times now while rebuilding the ship. All right, so that is going to do it for today. We have redesigned our ship basically twice now, so <laughs> it's uh, it's been a long day for me on this. Maybe not for you guys. I'll cut out a lot of the boring stuff and watch me struggle. The future episodes are going to be quite a bit longer. We're going to do a lot more each episode, and I'm not going to cut out as much stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoy watching this. It seems like you guys do. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.